In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Welcome to this Eucharist in the third week of Lent. The whole world is already in Easter happiness, but we here in Jordan, we still are in Lent. So, welcome to everyone from the Sacred Heart, English language, Paris Amman. The Mass is in the Jesuit Center, and we are joined today by Nursat English. I am Father Marc Stefan Giese, Jesuit priest here in Amman. And when we are near to the middle of Lent, to the point where we start getting closer to Jerusalem, it is good to understand more deeply that Lent is about orienting ourselves to Christ. Our hearts, our souls, our actions, our feelings, our desires, even our anxieties, everything we can direct towards Christ who takes all this to the cross. And he takes also our sins, but mainly our sins. So in thankfulness for this great sacrifice of love that he does, let us put in ourselves in his presence right now and asking him to grant us his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O oh God, to grant us by glorious healing remedies while still on earth. And you have shown us remedies for all our sins. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the, in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, 
inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing, bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the, sa blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, or anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, Rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, Lord you, you have, have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He 
found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And, those, and to those who sold doves he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the word of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple had been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the words Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name. When they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all. And he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Wow. Jesus is freaking out. It's not the calm Jesus, you come to him and say, I'm sorry, and says, yes, your sins are forgiven. No, no, today he's freaking out. He comes to the temple, he sees the sheep, the oxen, and it was not like usual. Normally, these who sell the animals for the sacrifices had to stay out of the temple. Also, the money changes outside of the temple area. But the high priest of this year Caiaphas, we will hear this name again. He made, obviously, some new prescriptions to let them into the temple area so that this thing with the money changing could be done more and he would get more money out of it. So, Jesus is not pure purely against this praxis of, of making the sacrifice and changing the money and so, but he says, this is the temple of God. Don't do it inside the temple. Do it outside. That is okay. Maybe you will understand that God does not want sacrifices but mercy, but okay, do it. But not inside the temple. And then it flips when he sees it. He takes some cord, he finds and <laughs> brings them out of the temple. He whips them so that they leave. He turns the tables, everything. He's really freaking out. He has passion. The zeal for the house of God is consuming him. The zeal for God's presence in this world is so strong that when he sees how this presence of God in the world is being abused, that he gets angry. I think that his disciples never seen Jesus before, nor after it in such a mood. So they remembered it. They remembered it so well that this story is written in all four Gospels. And mainly, Mark, Matthew, and Luke have it in the end of the Gospel, just shortly before the Passion, to make understand that the Passion that Jesus has, the fire, will lead him to the Passion of the cross. John puts it into the beginning. It's chapter 2 of the gospel, directly after the wedding in Cana. And so we understand that John wants to tell us something more with it. He wants to tell us that as in the wedding of Cana, Jesus shows who he is. 
the one who provides for the feast, the one who can change the water of our difficulties into the wine of everlasting life, the same person has passion, can get angry. Yes, he understands the human nature very well, as he says in the, in the end of the Gospel of today. But he shows also that the presence of God in this world is so important. And yes, the presence of God in the world is the temple. For the Jews, this is clear. This is the place where God is <clears throat> present in a special way. So when they, the Jews in those times, for not using the name of the Lord in vain, as we heard, have heard in the first reading, they would not swear by God, but they would swear by the temple. Oh, it's the same thing, because in the temple God is present. And when we are abusing the temple, we are abusing God. And you can do many things with Jesus. And he will forgive everything. But if you're messing with God and his Holy Spirit and his presence in this world, then he will start freaking out. Even if this will lead him to the cross. Because, of course, this is the very same high priest who allowed this practice to get the sheep and oxen into the temple, who afterwards will say, it is good that one man dies for the people. He has made himself a mighty enemy. But he gave this sign, that he cares, that he has fire for the presence of God in this world. And we should not be surprised about that, because he is the presence of God in the world. He was, he is, and he ever will be. He is here. This room, this church is the temple of God. God is with us. And now, and in this time of Lent, we are invited to reflect on that even more. Not only the church, the chapel, the place with the tabernacle is the temple of God, but you and me, through the baptism, have become temple of the living God, presence of God in this world. But all what we do as Christians, we announce how God is. When we are merciful, we announce the merciful God. When we are looking for revenge, you name it. So yes, God's zeal for his presence in this world is God's zeal for you and me. And we have seen this throughout the history of salvation. And there it's good that we have heard the longer form of the Ten Commandments. Because they do not start with what we have to do or what we are not allowed to do, but they start with I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. God is a God who sets us free. But we have to live accordingly. So it is a consequence. All these laws and prescriptions and things we have to do that we now in land abstain from things that we try to make good deeds, that we try to pray more, all this is just a consequence of God's love for us. He wants to transform us more and more into what we already are. Temples of His Spirit. And as Jesus foresees in the Gospel of today that the temple of His body will be raised up on the third day, so this is also foreseen for us. Yes, we have to be honest. Our temple, the temple of our body, will be destroyed. We will be dying one day. 
But if we have allowed Christ to extend his passion for the temple of God to our hearts, so that we have allowed him to drive everything out of our hearts, what is messing with God's presence, then for sure also our body and our soul will be raised up and join the lives of so many saints before us in heaven. And this is maybe everything we have to do, and this is what we try to do in a special way now in Lent. To allow Jesus, and to do our cooperation in it, to drive out everything that makes out of our heart a marketplace, or a place where technology and uh, our mobile phones have the first place, and to make it to a place where Christ, the name of God, the presence of God in this world, can dwell. This is what Lent is all about, and I hope that we can, in the four weeks that are still in front of us, live this, so that when we celebrate the crucifixion of Christ, we can be transformed. And that on the day of the resurrection, we can say that Christ is risen and that we will rise with him because he lives already in our hearts. So let us ask for this grace to prepare ourselves for this feast and to live the reality of this feast already now. That in us, God is present in this world. And that we announce his love and his mercy through our works. Let us now confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God is kind and full of mercy and compassion for us, and in his Son he knows the condition of human hearts. This gives us the confidence and trust to come to him with our prayers, with our worries, with all what is in our heart. And I want to pray, first of all, for the Church, for our Pope Francis, for our Patriarch Pierre Battista, for Bishop William, for all who have some responsibilities in the leadership of the Church and for the Churches, that 
the Spirit of God may always guide them and lead them. And today, when part of the church celebrates Easter and the other part not, let us pray especially that the Spirit may lead our leaders in the churches to come together so that we all can celebrate Easter at the same date. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let us also continue to pray for those who are suffering in these times of pandemic. Let's pray for those who are sick and either at home or in, in the hospitals. Let's pray for those who are severely sick of this, of this disease and maybe have to meet their Creator today. Let's pray for those who take care of all those who are sick in the hospitals, in the homes. Let's pray for the frontline nurses in every respect. Let's pray for the government, for our king, that they may find the right decisions that they have to make to guide us through these times. And let's pray for those who have lost someone they love. That this time of pandemic be for all of them and for us not only a time of fear and of difficulties, but also of closeness and intimacy with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Let's also pray, pray for peace in this region, in our country, in our communities. Let's pray for peace in the western part of the Holy Land, in, also in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, in so many places on, in the world that the Lord may give again His Holy Spirit to those who can lead the peoples to peace and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our In a moment of silence, I invite you all to offer your own prayers and intentions. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for our departed, for those that are close to us, for those that we miss in these times, for those no one prays for, and for all departed. That their bodies who have been temples of the Holy Spirit may be raised together with Christ's eternal body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Hear our prayer. God of mercy and of might, you have words of eternal life. And every day, these words want to transform our hearts. We ask you to listen to our prayers, to those we have brought to you with our words and those we have offered to you in the signs of our hearts and answer them according to your will. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await that sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly, intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your daughters and sons. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed, Holy Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this living and holy sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Saviour, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Peter Faber, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession your presence will rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Pierre Battista, our Patriarch, William, our Bishop, the other of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those following us online or on New Start English, I invite you all to make an act of spiritual communion. To tell Jesus how much you want 
him to come to you, to be with you, to drive out everything of your heart that hinders him to come and to transform you. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we ask for God's blessing, thank you for everyone helping to celebrate this Mass here today, for the music, for the readers, for the altar service, for the camera teams. May it be of good use for, for us who were here and for everyone who has been following or will be following this Mass in the different media, that the Word of God and the spiritual communion may really transform our hearts and, and clean our hearts so that Jesus can live in them. Let us now ask for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your command. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.